Hello everyone, I'm going to be telling you about simple harmonic motion, so that's another lesson. This time we are focusing on applications of simple harmonic motion. Now, something that you need to know about simple harmonic motion is while in mechanics I could just talk about resultant force, which, which would be the net force acting on an object, now, remember that my object is trying to go towards equilibrium in simple harmonic motion. So that resultant force, I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to name it restoring force, okay? So the restoring force is the resultant force that we had in you know, other parts of physics, but specifically for simple harmonic motion. And it's always acting towards equilibrium. It wants the object to go to the equilibrium, okay? Now, let's look at this example. I have a trolley and there are two springs attached to this trolley which makes this trolley go to an oscillatory motion back and forth. Now I have a ticker timer that is going to record the first half cycle which is showing here on the graph. The first half cycle of the, um, of the trolley as it oscillates and uh, this ticker timer has a needle that every f uh, second um, hits the paper inside of the ticker timer 50 times. So the frequency is 50 dots per second. Now my paper moves according to how the trolley moves. So if my paper moves faster, then during those 50 dots per second, my dots are going to be further apart. And if my paper is moving slower, meaning that my trolley is moving slower, those dots are closer together, okay? So, by doing this, having this sticker timer, I can make a, a graph showing the displacement and the time, how they vary. And then I can measure the time period for my oscillations. And you can also take a notice of the acceleration, okay, during the oscillatory motion. And if you look at the, car, uh, at the cards, the cards, the graph, you can see that the dots are closer together uh, when I'm further away from the equilibrium and when I'm getting closer to the displacement to be zero, my dots are moving further apart. So that means that my car uh, changes the velocity, so the acceleration is higher when I'm going towards equilibrium than when I'm starting to slow down, which makes sense. So in this point here, my acceleration is smaller and I know that because I have more dots uh, that were made in a certain amount of time, okay? So that means that I'm starting to slow down and change direction. And here I'm passing through equilibrium, so I'm going like really fast, okay? So because my dots are further apart and because I always have 50 dots per second, it means that the, my trolley moved most during that amount of time, so that means that the acceleration is higher. Now, if I want to change the frequency of the oscillation, there are two ways that I can do this, okay? So, imagine that I want to reduce it. I can increase the mass, and you can just simply think about force equals mass times acceleration. And if I increase the mass, I will get that my oscillations are reduced, the frequency of them are reduced, okay? Because I need more uh, to get, um, because I need, I would have to need more acceleration, okay? Um, and then, if I decrease the strength of the spring, again, think about F equals MA, I'm also going to reduce the frequency of my oscillations. I cannot have my object to move back and forth as fast, as fast, okay? Now, as I told you, uh, the acceleration uh, in simple harmonic motion is always a constant, a minus a constant times displacement. So what I want you to show to me, uh, and it's going to show in the next slide, is that to show that for a spring-related simple harmonic motion, my acceleration is going to have the, formula, uh, the following formula. My acceleration is going to be the restoring force over mass that comes simply from Newton's second law of motion. And this restoring force is going to be minus, so opposite to the displacement, k, a constant, times x, the displacement, over m for mass, okay? And again, k is the spring constant, s, x is the displacement, and m is the mass. I'll move it soon, so uh, pause the video if you want to try this exercise by yourself. Otherwise, here it is, okay? So I want to prove this here on the top, that acceleration equals restoring force over mass, which is equal to minus kx over m.
Now, I have a spring. So assuming that my spring obeys Hooke's law, I'm going to have that the force that I apply equals a constant times the extension. So how much my displacement is in that spring, okay? Or I could say, if you want, the tension of the spring, Ts, equals k, a constant, the spring constant, times delta L, the displacement, okay? I can say it either way. Now, my tension changes while the object is oscillating at a displacement, displacement x. So my change in tension equals minus k, the spring constant, times x, the um, displacement. Now, because my change in tension, in tension sorry, provides the force that is trying to make my object go, to, go towards equilibrium, so my change in tension gives me the restoring force. I can say that FR, the restoring force, equals minus KX, where again K is the spring constant and X is the displacement. So if I now use Newton's second law that says that force equals mass times acceleration, I can say that my acceleration equals my restoring force over mass. My restoring force is minus kx, so I got it. So I'm going to substitute here in the equation, and I get minus kx over m for mass. So this is going to be equal to minus 2 pi f squared times x, which is equal to minus omega squared x. So this shows that I have an acceleration in the form of a constant, times the displacement and a minus in front of it, so saying that my acceleration opposes the displacement. So I just proved that I have simple harmonic motion. And when I said 2 pi f squared, this is equal to k over m, okay? So k over m equals to 2 pi f squared, and then I keep having the minus and I keep having the x, okay? So that means that I can calculate my frequency, okay? And my frequency is going to be the square root of 2 pi, uh, sorry, uh, 2 pi square root of k over m, okay? Oh, here it is. So, oh, it's 1 over, actually, because 2 pi was on the other side. So for a spring system, the frequency of my oscillations is going to be 1 over 2 pi, all multiplying by the square root of k, the spring constant, over m, the mass, okay? So um, this comes directly from the formula on this slide. So this comes directly by rearranging this formula. Because frequency uh, is 1 over t, the time period, I can say that my time period for a spring is going to be 1 over f, which is equal to 2 pi square root of m over k. All right, so that's for springs. Let's uh, look at an example here. So I have a spring with a certain length of uh, 300 uh, millimeters. It goes to a length of 379 millimeters when I have a mass of 0 0.20 kilograms being suspended by the spring. So they want to know the extension of the spring and the spring constant. So the extension is very, very simple. Extension is the difference in between the maximum length and the, uh, the, the original length. So that's going to be 379 minus 300 millimeters. And this would give me 79 millimeters or not point not 0.79 meters. And my spring constant I get from the formula that I showed you in the last slide. So my spring constant is going to be the force, mg, divided by um, the extension. So I get 0.20 times 9.8 uh, divided by 0.079. Notice that I'm using the universal units, okay? And this would give me a, string, a spring constant of 25 Newton meters, okay? So this comes from Hooke's law. And then they say the time period. Well, I know the time period. Uh, I just showed you in the last slide. That's going to be 2 pi times the square root of the mass over k, the spring constant. So again, I substitute the values and I get 2 pi times the square root of 0.20 over 25, and that is going to give me 0.56 seconds, okay? So that's how you apply it for a spring. Let's now apply it for a pendulum, okay? 
so here I have my pendulum okay and this is a pendulum moving and here I have the forces acting on a pendulum on a certain position okay in a position showing there on the graph so I'm going to say that my vertical component is that the resultant force equals T minus mg so here I go and uh, this would be for example horizontally but if I want this side so if I want an angle is mg cosine of the angle okay and I can say that my horizontal component so the one that makes my string to move sideways is going to be the restoring force that is equal to minus mg sine of theta so I'm deciding minus going towards equilibrium okay now again using Newton's second law I know that my acceleration is going to be f over m so substituting the restoring force I get minus mg sine of theta where theta is the angle in between the um, vertical component and where the spring actually is um, over m the mass so the mass is cancelled out and I get that acceleration is minus g times the sine of theta okay now I can make some approximations in my pendulum so for my pendulum to be almost working perfectly I need to have small angles okay so for small angles which are angles up to 10 degrees I will have that my acceleration is minus g over l where l is the length of the spring times s where s is the displacement that i have from the equilibrium so this is again in form of a minus constant times displacement so this is going to be minus 2 pi f all squared times s which is equal to minus omega squared times s so I am showing that my simple pendulum has an acceleration in the form of simple harmonic motion and therefore it oscillates as a simple harmonic motion. So I want you to show that this happens, okay? So that I get that acceleration where 2 pi f squared equals g over l. Again, I'm going to show it in the next slide, so pause the video if you want to try yourself. And here is the answer, okay? So, again, I want to get that acceleration is minus g over l times s, which has the form of minus 2 pi f squared times s, which has the formula of minus omega squared times s. So, I have the type of acceleration for the simple harmonic motion. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say that for small angles, the sine of s over l the sine of theta which is s over l is more or less s over l okay because my angles are so small for small angles I can actually have the value instead of the angle so it will be s over l so my acceleration which is minus g sine of the angle will basically uh, basically be equal to minus g over l times s and here I'm assuming that I have the opposite angle over the hypotenuse, so S over L. So I'm assuming that this S is not curved at all, it's just a straight line because my angle is so small, okay? So therefore, the object is oscillating with simple harmonic motion because I can say that my acceleration, which is minus G over L times S, has the form of minus 2 pi f squared times s that has the formula or formula or form of minus omega squared times s so that means that my frequency of the oscillations and again going here on the formula and um, at moving around the subject of the equation my frequency of the oscillations for spring is 1 over 2 pi times the square root of g over l and therefore my time period which is 1 over frequency is going to be 2 pi square root of L over G so make sure that you know the form the formulas for frequency and time period for the spring and for the pendulum okay write them one next to the other you will see they are very similar and you are expected to know how to get to this acceleration and get to this frequency and time period how you would get to the formulas you are supposed to know that okay at equilibrium I could simply say that TS 
So the tension of the spring, the string, sorry, minus mg, so the force that is trying to put my pendulum to fall from the, my mass to fall from the pendulum, is equal to the mass times the centripetal acceleration, which is v squared over L, okay? All right, so that's how I get to show that I have simple harmonic motion, both for a spring and a pendulum. And now I'm going to put these two videos on the description because those are videos that show you uh, how I have the wave effect, the pendulum wave effect. So it's, they are really cool experiments if you want to do, and you can even produce this at home uh, with the spring. And you will see that the frequency of my oscillations are going to depend, and let's look at the formula here, of the length, only of the length, because 1 over 2 pi, that's a constant, g is a constant, so the only thing that is not a constant is L, the length, so if I change the length, I change the frequency of my oscillations, and I will get really cool effects on the wave pendulum, okay? So check those videos, and that's all for today. There are some questions here that you can attempt, and if you attempt the questions, these are going to be, oopsie, the answers, okay? So there are many questions, and here are the answers. As always, if you have any problems, come and speak to me directly or message me, and I will see you next time for another video on the springs and simple harmonic motion. Actually, I don't know if I have more springs. I think it's just more simple harmonic motion. Bye, take care.